Hey everyone, welcome back to Jetnautics and in this video we are going to build an RC airplane that is the H540. If you haven't already, don't forget to watch part 1 as this will help you catch up with this video. So first we are going to remove the old glue residue to save some weight and guess what, that's 7 grams of glue. It might not seem much but I'm trying to remove every gram of dead weight as the material I'm building with is pretty heavy but durable. So after ungluing a side panel, I found a weak point and I'm going to strengthen it by gluing on a small piece of PCB. PCB boards are a great substitute for hobby plywood or a balsa as they are lightweight and pretty strong. After that, I'm going to glue the side board into place. The next thing we need to replace is this crooked piece called the firewall or the front bulkhead. This holds the power pod and acts as a form for the cowling and the canopy hatch. I'm just going to wiggle and pull that out. Now this is the replacement firewall and it looks so much stronger. But before we install the firewall, we first need to strengthen the nose of the plane. We are going to start that out by removing these barbecue skewers which I had inserted to strengthen the front end as it was weakened because of very bad cuts. So I'm going to pull each one out and glue the side plates. Making sure they are all right angled. To keep these two pieces joined, I'm going to insert barbecue skewers into the material and trim them to perfect length. Next, I test fitted the firewall, looked good so I went ahead and glued it in place. I'm also going to reinforce the surface of these two pieces. This is something you have to do when working with Cora Sheet since Cora Sheet is pretty much hollow. Just adding glue inside the joint will not hold it in place. After that, we are going to reinstall the barbecue skewers we removed earlier just for some added strength. I wasn't too confident the nose would hold up in the long term, so I repurposed some aluminium plates. I made sure I scrapped up the surfaces of both the core sheet and the aluminium for better adhesion. And then glued both plates onto the airframe. Moving on to the tail, I'm gonna first add glue to the wire to prevent any damage when pulled, then gonna glue the elevator and rudder servos. In hindsight, I should have installed metal gear servos as the plastic 9 grams have a very high chance of stripping and aren't pretty reliable. Next, we are gonna work on the body panels for the fuselage. I have them all marked, gonna cut out the tabs and then score them so we can form the panels. So to get the best core cut in a core sheet panel, you have to remove material. Simply pressing the material with a barbecue skewer won't work. So score cut out a very thin rectangle, making sure you don't cut all the way. Fold the panel using a sharp blade and cut flush with the lower surface. And that is how you execute a score cut. Testing it out, you can see it's a very clean cut and also stays in one place. After score cutting both skin panels, I did a test fit on the fuselage to make sure the panels were uniform and didn't have any gaps whatsoever. After confirming the fit, I glued the panels on one by one, started by applying glue to the centerpiece, letting it dry, then reinforcing it before going on to the side piece. Gluing it in in this sequence helps prevent the glue drying quickly before attaching it. But before we apply glue to the side panels, it's very crucial that we roughen the surface with a blade for the glue to stick better. Then we apply a healthy amount of glue and lay the piece on the table and squish the panel for the glue to flatten and spread. Then we repeat the same steps for the other side. Thank you. 
With the front roof panel, we follow the same exact sequence of steps. First, a test fit, then apply glue to the center, slap it on, then reinforce the joints on both sides, roughen the surface and apply a healthy amount of glue and squish. Once the panels were done, I started building the power pod over the motor mount. Now this is the only part that's not made out of color sheet. I made this out of foam board because of its solid core and it helps the glue stick to the core for the motor mount. I also use PCB for the motor to mount on instead of plywood because it's only 3mm in thickness and allows me to directly mount the screws to the motor without using that X plate and also because it's easy to find and lightweight. After making the power pod, I applied glue to the core of the foam board and stuck it onto the fuselage. Then added glue to the edges to reinforce the power pod. After installing the power pod, I routed the ESC wires and added double sided sticky tape to secure the ESC. Since the internals of the nose of the airplane is ready, let's focus on the exterior that is the cowling. First step is to score cut all the folds and then remove the pieces that act as a lip. You can also refer Flightus full build video to get an idea of the type of cuts. So for the lip piece that goes as a C fold, we need to remove the material and have just the bottom layer. This can be done by dragging your blade through the corrugated core. After removing the material, you will need to cut off any ridges because this needs to be a flat piece. You can achieve a perfectly flat layer by repeatedly dragging your blade over the lines without cutting the bottommost layer. To further prep the cowling, you'll need to perform 45 degree bedford cuts on all the score cuts. After prepping the cowling, I used some duct tape to hold the cowling in shape for a test fit. It was a good thing that I tested it before gluing it on because I found out that my propeller would strike the cowling which was not good at all. This is not a design flaw, but because the motor that I was planning to use, the Raystar 2212000 12,000KV, didn't have enough stator height or shaft length for the required clearance of the propeller. So I needed to resolve this issue. Since I was limited to this motor, this meant I had to extend the motor mount. But in hindsight, I should have just got a bigger motor, because later I figured the 2212 size motor was underpowered and in the end I ended up extending the power port and upgrading to a bigger motor anyways. So that is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed episode 2 of the H540 build series. If so don't forget to subscribe and like and drop any questions down in the comments and I'll address them. Stay tuned for the next video and until next time bye bye.